I should start off by saying my brother is not only a military man, but he's your basic hetero never let them see you cry cliche of a military man. He's not afraid of anything, well, except for the entire country of Japan. This is his story. My brother joined the Marines when he was 18 and was stationed in Japan. He really enjoyed his time there for a while, the girls specifically. He made friends with some of the Japanese guys his age who worked around the base. On nights where he and his soldier friends had a night off, the local Japanese guys would show them around, bring them to bars, introduce them to girls, etc. One night after a little drinking and no luck with girls, the guy invited my brother home to play video games. My brother accepted the invite and they played video games for a few hours. During this time, he tells my brother the main reason he wanted to go home early was because his little sister has been suffering from night terrors, causing her to wake up, screaming, crying, and sometimes vomiting. He was worried about her and wanted to be home in case she had an episode. At this point in the story, I should explain how this guy's house was shaped. The house was built in the shape of a horseshoe, with a garden in the middle. His bedroom was at the very edge of one side of the U shape and his sisters all the way at the other end, so they are essentially across the garden from each other. If he looks out his window, he could see into hers and vice versa. They decide to call it a night and the Japanese guy walks over to the window to look across the garden into his sister's window to check on her. He lifts the blinds and peers out for a fraction of a second before jumping back, screaming and looking at my brother like he just saw something horrible. My brother then goes to look and he stops him. He tells him that he saw a dark cloud with red eyes hovering over his sister's sleeping body. My brother, naturally, does not believe him and decides to look for himself. He creeps quietly over to the window and lifts the blind, but this time he finds himself eye to eye with what he describes as a dark black puff of smoke with a face. My brother reluctantly admitted that he hid under the guy's covers and stayed there for a while until it was light outside. Once he lifted the blankets, he saw that the smoky figure had come a little closer and was in a room with them, just on the other side of the thin sheets. I don't know what to believe, or if maybe they drank more than what they say they did that night and imagined it all, but I know my brother believes what he saw. He sticks to his story, and when he tells it, he looks like someone who saw something truly sinister. When I was younger, my family was extremely poor and lived on a very old mobile home on some land my grandpa owned. This piece of land was in a very small town in the middle of nowhere, Texas, and was covered in woods. The town itself was your typical small country town where football was king and there was nothing to do but get drunk or high on the weekend. It was also the type of town, along with it being the early 90s, where one didn't typically have to worry too much about locking their doors or setting an alarm. Now, our trailer had a two bedroom and my parents, always putting us kids ahead of themselves, slept in a living room on a fold out couch. My room was directly connected to it and my sister's room was down a hallway past the kitchen and bathroom at the other end of the trailer. One night, after everyone had gone to bed, my dad was woken up by a feeling that there was someone in the room. He looks around a bit and sees a large male figure sitting in the chair just a few feet from the bed. My dad quickly flipped on the night switch next to his bed and saw it was a neighbor from down the road named Carter. Carter was known to be a frequent drug user and was often in trouble with the law because of that. My dad asked him what the f was he doing here and told him to get out. And he responded, I can't get out. The demons are chasing me and your house is the only safe one. My dad, who I think is a fairly large and terrifying person, responded that if he didn't get out and get out quickly, that the house would be a lot less safe for him. Carter says, if I leave, they'll get me. They've been chasing me all night. If they catch me, I'm dead. My dad's response was that there was no demons, but that if he didn't get the f out of his house, he'd be dead. From what I've been told, since I was asleep for this part, my mom also hurled a few threats, and while she may not be big, she was equally as terrifying. I believe it was her anger that finally scared him off. My dad got up and locked the doors and watched through the blinds as Carter decided, since he couldn't outrun the demons, he'd steal our old beater Suburban that my dad always left the keys in. He drove around for about an hour. We called the police and it took them about that long to get out to us since the closest police station was about 20 or 30 minutes away. He finally brought it back and was arrested and taken to jail. He was deemed crazy and ended up locked in a mental institution. The scarier part is that for years after this, we'd get phone calls where all we'd hear is music and you'd have lyrics like, I'm going to f and end you. 
These calls lasted for years and followed us from house to house, even though we always had different numbers and would even be in different states. We always thought it was him sending us a message. The calls stopped when I was about 12. I later found out that it was around that time Carter thought the best thing he could do for himself was soak himself in gasoline and set himself on fire. My school's library is open until around 2 in the morning for the idiots like me who don't do their essays until the last minute. It's a pretty small building and most of the books are in the basement area called the stacks. Just to give you a quick layout, there's the big main stairs that go down to the stacks, a vending machine room, and the long hallway with four entrances into the stacks. The stacks are two really big rooms on opposite sides of the hallway with a huge amount of bookshelves and study desks lining the walls. I was there around 11 p.m. last year. It was a pretty research intensive essay, so I was down in the stacks working in one of the study desks so I didn't have to keep going upstairs and downstairs again. I had been there for maybe two hours, and by that time everyone had pretty much left except for a boy working a few desks down from me. I was pretty zoned out by this point. It was an 8am class, so I didn't have much time until it was due and I was sort of panicking. So it really pissed me off when I heard someone flipping through the book pages really fast to make them do that loud world noise at the end of the other room. I sort of ignored it for a while, thinking they'd go away eventually, but they just kept doing it. After 5 minutes, I got sick of it and started to walk over to tell them to knock it off. I got about 3 steps across the room and it just stopped. I sat back down and it was quiet again for like 10 more minutes before the flipping pages noise started again. Only loads louder, like they'd grab a huge book this time. The boy started to get pissed off too and he stood up and started walking through the bookshelves trying to find them. The noise kept going so I got up too and started looking around with him. It got really loud and it was pretty obvious where it was coming from by that point, so we started walking towards it. He was on one side of the shelves and I was on the other. We walked all the way down the shelves. No one was there. We hadn't seen anyone come in the stacks and we were on a side of the room with entrances. No way could anyone have come in without us seeing them. The noise stopped again and we both just sort of slowly walked back to our seats. I assumed it was just a fan or something in the other room and I really needed to get my essay done. We sat down and immediately the noise started again. It sounded like it was coming from right next to the guy's chair. He shoved his stuff in his bag, looked at me, said, screw this, and took off. I was out of there maybe 5 seconds behind him. I still won't go back to the stacks at night, even when there's other people down there. No essays worth getting murdered by a weird book ghost. <laughs>